welcome to the Fleet Geeks podcast. We're here to help develop fleet and transport professionals. Do you want to progress and develop your skills and knowledge? We promise to bring lively conversation and debate around interesting issues and keep you bang up to date with changes in our awesome industry. The Fleet Geeks are a community of professionals and if you enjoy the podcast, why not join the discussion for free in the Fleet Geek community over on Facebook. It looks like it's recording now, so the red light's rolling. Uh, here we are for the fifth episode. We've got our new gear. It was really ridiculously expensive, and we've managed to set it up after about 45 minutes of trying. So uh, here is Mike, Jamie, and myself, and we're here to talk about debunking the abbreviations and some of the ridiculous use of language that we use uh, and, and terms. What was the term you used a minute ago? It was so, okay, so memorable, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so we have already tried recording this and already the, the, the equipment's broken. So, not us, um, it was the equipment, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I was going to say, it, it, feels like, it feels like it's about to emotionally break me. Um, but, uh, He's seen the bill. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I think, yeah, no, the red light's still going, so happy days. We're just going to keep talking, right? Um, but yeah, we're talking about debunking uh, the abbreviations around our sector, in the, in, in the transport sector, as well as like some of the jargon. That's the word jargon. I was looking for, yeah. jargon. Jargon. Good word, isn't it? I was, I was looking. I was looking to speak to, about Super some word. of the jargon. So, uh, Mike, go on. You, you kick us off. What what really frustrates you, mate? Well, my first one, my starter for ten, then has got to be uh, the DVSA versus VOSA or VOSA. You know what? Where does that all come from? You know, why do we still speak? Is it t- thirteen years nearly after the change from uh, the VOSA to the DVSA? We still talk about that agency that drives around in those Battenberg coloured cars. Uh, as as Vosa, what do you think, guys? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I think I, I think you uh, said what, what was it? Twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen. So that, that's nine years, isn't it? Uh, now that it's twenty twenty two, and I think that um, you know it just goes to show how slowly as an industry we change and we evolve. Uh, you know, drivers are consistently saying Vosa still during CPC sessions. What, what's your findings, Jay? You're teaching quite a bit yeah, of CPC so at the minute. I had it at the weekend. It was mentioned uh, Vosa, um, and. And yeah, like I said previously, I think it's, it comes from the fact that they didn't change everything very quick. Well publicised that they merged, but when when it actually happened, the vans were still driving around with Vosa written on them, and it obviously all down to cost, obviously. But yeah, I think people just still call it Vosa, don't they? And like you say, every CPC session you go on, someone will actually definitely say Vosa. Do you think it's because the drivers are old farts? Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think. Do you know what? I think. I think Vosa or Vosa. Has a more aggressive tone to it, don't you? Than yeah. than, than DVSA. I DVSA think, is a bit you soft. Say it as a word, yeah. can't you? I didn't even yeah. thought of that. Yeah, you yeah, say yeah. Vosa, yeah. Vosa, Vosa as yeah. a word, don't you? Whereas you have to say the letters DVSA. Exactly. So actually, yeah. it's a little bit. It's soft. I suppose maybe it's the laziness. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Mm. It is. And the other the other debunking myth regarding the DVSA that I hear all the time is, well, they're self funded. So, you know, at Christmas time, when they're trying to build up their coffers for their Christmas parties, that they go around and they increase the, they increase the activity, they increase the stopping of vehicles on the road to, to, so they can issue fines. Well, do you know what? That one's always bugged me because the DVSA can impose fees for things like testing, testing of vehicles, testing of drivers, but every penny that is raised, they, they, they're not the, you know, they are not the people that collect the money in. They're not the people who collect the fines. Um, it, it comes from the judicial system, so you you get a fixed penalty notice, you pay a fine, and it goes to Rishi Sunak. And let's face it, Rishi Sunak needs the money more than uh, most people at the minute. So, yeah, they're not they're not self funded. They're not on any targets. You know, their target is road safety, and you know, successful or not on on, on whether that happens once, or not. Once again, that's that's a massive myth that's brought up every at least every yeah, other CPC. Every, yeah. and, I, and I think I to be fair, I um, did some training this morning with some drivers, drivers hours. And that was brought up on that. Yeah, on, on, yeah. The, on this occasion, I think I think the fine the fines definitely increased roadside with the introduction. Uh, introduction. Look at me. <laughs> I can't even talk. Uh, with the introduction of fixed penalties, I think uh, you know the, it's fairly well documented the increase in. Um, in, in, in fees, certainly from 2018, uh, when it was like half a million quid. We've even got it as part of our CPC course. Half a million quid in 2018 into 2019, a year later, roadside fixed penalties up to three and a half mil. But actually, what it, what I always say it is, is actually they're a government agency and we're 
essentially they're always looking for efficiency gains, right? So they're always looking to impact road safety in the best way possible by maximising uh, maximising their their opportunity for who who they're speaking to and catching catching the crims, you know. Um, talking of which, Rishi Sunak, did you know? <laughs> did you know? No, but did you know Rishi Sunak? Do you know he's married? His his wife's a billionaire. Yeah, no. Billionaire oh, yeah, heiress. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's worth a few bob. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's not short of a few bob himself, is he? The old conservatives, they, yeah. they don't walk the same road we do, I tell you. No, no, it's, it's a very... Yeah. Yes, I think, but yeah, it's, it is. It's one of those things that, you know, uh, do as I do as I uh, say, not as I do. And I think we've learned that over the last uh, little while. But, yeah. yeah, absolutely. But yeah, so, uh, yeah, Vosa and... Um, uh, VOSA and D- DVSA so the correct one is the DVSA Driver and Vehicle Standards Agency I think a big one for me is, and I find I find massively confusing uh, PCV PSV uh, HGV LGV um, it sounds like we're um, you know, all very uh, modern and woke, talking about LGBTQ <laughs> yeah. I, A plus yeah. so talk to me a bit about LGV and HGV. What, what, what's that all about? Is it European LGV? It's a European term. It, it, EU term yeah, kind of. It, it for me, it fits in with driver licensing. So for, for since since we sort of took over the European driver licensing model, that's where LGV really makes a difference. And as a tra- as a transport manager trainer, I tend to call I tend to talk in LGV terms because it makes it easier for the students to understand driving license categories. But you know, in, in other areas of the business, we talk HGV, don't we? And a lot of the old school don't like me talking about LGVs, but... Uh, you don't hear many drivers say that LGV no. drivers, do you? No, no you don't. And uh, But what's LCV? Large commercial or light commercial? Oh, light commercial. Yeah, I think that's just... But a, some people say LCV for large for commercial, light, yeah, don't they? Yeah, oh, okay. so so the how it works is that so uh, a, a large commercial vehicle... It is t- in fact, it gets more confusing because there's two pieces of European legislation that talk about a large, com- a large, large goods vehicle as being anything over three and a half... Uh, thousand kilograms three and a half ton but in the driving license uh, we've got the category c1 now category c1 is a medium goods vehicle doesn't become a large goods vehicle until it goes over seven and a half ton Uh, and and anything less than three and a half ton of course is a small goods vehicle so although a lot of people refer to them as lcvs which is also light commercial vehicle but there's i don't i've never actually found a piece of legislation that refers to light commercial vehicle okay Hi, it's Pete from Flagship Partners. We're really proud to sponsor a Half Dozen Things podcast. At Flagship Partners, we take road safety really seriously and we're your road safety partnership. We help transport companies with compliance and training across their businesses, including first aid, driver CPC and other transport management services. So if your fours are credited or you want to improve your operator compliance risk score, give Flagship Partners a call today. Although we do tend to talk, yeah, about yeah, absolutely. I think, um, I think, I think it's massively confusing. God, you know, well, then pe- you've got class one, class two, class just oh, talk, yeah, yeah, more, in a more factors to it. <laughs> it, exactly, right? But I think, um, you know, for me, for me, the preferred term is HGV. I've, I've always worked with HGVs because I guess that's that's the background and what I've known them as, and uh, LGV. So what what is a preference? What why LGV? Sorry, but- I, I only th- I only think in LGV terms because of the driving licensing. Uh, situation and it's easier to get students to understand driver licensing um, uh, than it is to, yeah, we're using those terms but yeah it, I mean anything really over three and a half tons of HGV isn't it heavy goods vehicle so yeah. Uh, but yeah it's a difficult one to, to gain and uh, passenger carrying vehicle pub- public service vehicle PCV passenger carrying ve- it, you can be a passenger carrying vehicle but not be a PSV which is a public service vehicle so but that's me talking about buses and I probably shouldn't do that <laughs> <laughs> just to add to, just to add to our woes really I guess but we, you know we're, we're welcome to talk about buses on the fleet geeks absolutely so for me they're a bit boring but you know never mind (laughs) Uh, anyone listening please don't take offence obviously I love buses Um, oh he loves buses confession Jamie's about to say he loves trains no no. (laughs) okay I'll stick with trucks I was going to say trucks yeah HGV LGV oh there we go that's a bit American well oh a bit American my daughter watches that much American TV. She calls the ice cream van an ice cream truck. Ooh, so uh, yeah, so yes. uh, yeah, we need to get rid of that Does one. Does she say garbage as well? 
No. My lad, my lad was really bad. As a, he, he's like eight now, but he, he used to say, God, rubbish! It's rubbish! <laughs> and then he'd go yeah. to me, uh, can we have some candy from the shop? <laughs> what? <laughs> candy? Sweets! Oh. Uh, interesting one in our terminology then. And, and uh, you, we, uh, you know, if, if this goes out before the watershed, we've got to be careful. But I think the Americans actually do have some good terminology that I use particularly to get people to understand the difference between a trailer and a semi-trailer. Because the Americans call them semis. Now we've got a couple of meanings for the word semi in this country. <laughs> <laughs> so if he's automatically thinking the, uh, the oh, I've been Valentine's Day. Well, when it's we Valentine's this, Day. So. We are recording this on Valentine's yeah. Day, so hopefully we'll all get yeah. more than a semi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about a house that's de- that's attached to another one, but so the semi trailer, the trailer that you have to impose some sort of lifting kind of mechanism on to pull it along, whereas a, a normal trailer is just one that you can drag along a, 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 a drawbar combination. So semi. Yeah, that's another Americanism, but truck now, I definitely think lorry. I'll tell you a funny story was I, I got the uh, I got a, a council meeting once. Uh, I got the recorder of the, the council meeting, I forget what you call them now, the people who take notes, uh, to strike off the word juggernaut from a council meeting. They were talking about juggernauts thundering up and down the street, and I said, There is absolutely when, when was the last time you heard the same juggernaut <laughs> with 18 wheeler 18 wheeler that's the american again <laughs> yeah. well i used to once upon a time i used to run a pub and ben, if ben's listening i don't think he will because he's not really into fleet stuff but uh my good friend ben and i we used to have a laugh there was a guy there absolute pisshead um and he was called laurie like just as a joke and after a few drinks he couldn't speak properly so we used to call him inarticulated laurie <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, anyway, that's by the by. Okay, so talk to me a bit about class one, class two, C and CE. What, what's what's the, what's the crack with that then? Because that's another confusing one, isn't it? So you speak to most drivers, it's class one or class two, isn't it? Oh, yeah, Absolutely. I'd, I'd say they know their categories, but they they refer themselves as a class one or a class two driver. I've never ever, I don't think, spoke to a driver that says I'm a CE driver. No, no, no that's driver. Just, and that goes back even longer. That goes back to the early '90s, you know. So that goes back thirty odd years now. Um, where we changed over to that was part of the European driver licensing model that we took on uh, and we went over to C and C plus E but yeah like you I've never heard a driver refer to themselves as C and and you think about the adverts for for agency drivers you know we wanted class one driving yeah does that mean they're better than everybody else? Or, you know? Yeah, I was going to say, there's nothing like a good class system to start upsetting, <laughs> upsetting each other. So that's, yeah, that's a bit particularly, I don't, I don't know, I, th- out of all of them, that's probably the one I probably won't try to correct too much uh, because I think everybody understands it, don't they? Yeah, I think I think everyone gets it. I think if you say class CE or class, uh, or category, category, sorry, CE, look, look at me mixing yeah, up category, category and class, class right? Yeah. But the C, E and C, um, I, th- I think drivers would probably look at you with a little bit of square eyes, not really knowing what you're talking about. Weirdly, there is a C1 category, obviously. That's the problem. And, and people that's can the think problem. that that is class one. Yeah, I mean, so that's again, with, with my transport manager hats uh, teacher on, I, 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 you know, I think the problem with referring to class one and class two, people then get mixed up yeah. with a C1 category and they say, well, I thought that meant class one. And say, no, actually C is half a category of a, yeah. uh, C1 is half a category of a C. So uh, yeah, we, that's what we really, in, in, in Transport Manager, we, we, we don't, we expunge the word class one and class two and it has to be C, C, E, whatever it might be. But uh, I always say, the, you know, people say, what's the E then? Well, E stands for the extra bit. Yeah. Or the bit you eave behind you. <laughs> Not leave behind you. <laughs> Not leave behind you. Well, in some circumstances, yeah. Yeah, Jamie and I know a bit about yeah, that, we, don't we, Jay? Not for us, but we've, <laughs> yeah, we've looked. Not, at, not uh, for us, but sometimes we have to investigate these situations and try and do... Um, What's it called? Uh, remedial training. I seem we to say. have lost my semi. Was the uh, was, <laughs> <laughs> if they were in America? Oh, I seem to have lost my semi. That's what you're yeah. referring to. Isn't yeah, it? absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. The pin wasn't in the uh, uh, wasn't in the jaws. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the mind boggles. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so, okay, well, we're talking about... Do you know what? Whilst we're talking about debunking some of the jargon, fifth wheel then, let's do that. Because that wasn't on the list, but I've just... Ooh, we, we got there, we yeah. leaving yeah. their leaving their semi yeah. behind. So, <laughs> um, and making sure that, yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're pins in the jaws properly. So, uh, fifth wheel, what's that all about then? What Do we know why it's called the fifth wheel? Well, I've... I've there, I don't think there's an official line on this. I've heard... A, there are a couple of plausible explanations for fifth wheel. The one I tend to go with most is 
that the the fifth wheel coupling now the fifth wheel coupling is actually a Frauhoff coupling uh, to give it its full name in fact it, it was stolen it was actually a patent that was stolen from somebody I can't remember who it was invented it now but Frauhoff basically ended up painting it painting in it who, who are a trailer manufacturer yeah, so, right? so, yeah, yeah they were a trailer manufacturer so um, it's it's a, it's true true name is a Frauhoff coupling but um, so it's it's the idea of, of the Frauhoff coupling is that it it, it it goes underneath the trailer the semi trailer uh, and and it takes 20% of the weight of the trailer now 20 percent is a fifth so that's where the term fifth wheel come from but unless anybody else has anybody else got any other ones for that i have got another one in my well obviously. i always thought it's because tractor units back in the day were f- four by two four, four by twos yeah and then uh, that yeah. would be the fifth oh. and that's uh, that, that's just my head making that up to be perfectly honest that's, that's, what, I assumed. That, yeah. that's what i thought it was to be so fair. On, on a scammer it'd be a fourth wheel perhaps <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's uh, that that's uh, that's a good uh, theory because the other one that I'd heard and that, that could possibly be given some credence is the uh, is the fact that on the uh, on a on a, a horse a horse drawn carriage um, I don't I know nothing about horse drawn carriages or horses have come to think of it but on a horse drawn carriage there was like a, a fifth wheel that that acted as a pivot for for the. Uh, for the well, for the I don't know for the for the train it was carrying so that that's that that really rings true what you're saying there Jamie but yeah they're the two that I've heard it was something to do with uh, carriages coaches on on horses uh, but the twenty percent yeah I, I, I think they all work yeah, yeah they? actually what I've I've just I've just Wikipedia'd it on my phone the fifth wheel coupling provides a link between a semi tray semi trailer and the towing truck tractor unit leading trailer or dolly. Um, Blah blah blah. A horseshoe shaped coupling device called a fifth wheel on the rear of the towing vehicle. And um, where did it say? The term fifth wheel comes from a similar coupling used on four wheel horse drawn carriages and wagons. Yeah. A wheel would be placed on the rear frame section of the truck, which at the time had only four wheels, making the additional wheel the fifth, fifth wheel. wheel. So we sort of got there. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I still I still think there's some legs in the twenty percent. Uh, bit, but uh, yeah, uh, it's unless anybody, yeah, in the comments, go, yeah, uh, drop us, drop, think. drop, drop. I think, I think either, either, oh. either works, but uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're one of those funny things, isn't it? You only have to look at one of those and you get covered in grease, you don't even have to go anywhere near it, it just seems to cover you in grease just while looking at it. <laughs> that's the fitters, uh, yeah, yeah, everywhere, that's yeah. why, yeah, fifth, yeah. fifth, fifth wheel, uh, fifth wheel all, all over the uh, all over the carpet. Of course, uh, when you're at home, not many drivers uh, have uh, not done that, are they? At some stage in their uh, in their no, careers, the, the British breed, being the British, obviously had a different system. But uh, post, uh, I think it was First World War, and uh, that was the Scammel uh, coupling. But that was the other yeah. the other one. But uh, that did. It's like Beta Max and VHS. That didn't take off, and the Frau off coupling did. Yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. Have we got Have we got any other bits of jargon that we want to throw out there? Uh, I'm struggling to think, but if uh, if listeners have got any that they want debunking, why, why why not yeah. drop us a line and we'll uh, we'll have a chat about it for sure. And if but, not, we can always Google it. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else before we close it off. Uh, no, let's let's get cracking. Right then. Hope you've enjoyed it. Share it with other people. Hope you've had a laugh with us. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thanks Cheers, for listening. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please share with your friends and colleagues too. Join us for free on Facebook with the Fleet Geeks community for transport and fleet managers. Fleet Geeks offers ongoing professional development, networking and mentoring too. So get in touch with me, Pete Rushmer, on any social media platform to find out more.